I'm recording my end of Irrational Fear on Gundagara land of the Thoreau Nation. Sovereignty was never ceded. We need a treaty. Let's start the show. This is Irrational Fear. G'day, Irrational Fear listeners. Uh, Dan Illich here. And uh, I've also been joined by a very salty uh, Lewis Hobart. Lewis, yes. you look so you look so beach sweat. Thank you. The good kind of salty, not like um, an angry old man sort of salty, but um, <laughs> more like a, if you imagine taking Michelangelo's David and then um, plunging it in the ocean and then dragging it through the sand and then putting it in front of a microphone. That's how oh, I look. That, that is it. You, and you sound relaxed too. You sound like you, you've got the sound of summer in your, in your vocal cords. Thanks, Dan. They do say there's nothing more relaxing than um, having a one-year-old. <laughs> and that is part of the reason why you won't be joining us in Melbourne for our one millionth download <laughs> show at the Bolt House Theatre. Uh, and it's very upsetting. But, you know, we're going to try and have you on Zoom it's, or, or if, if, you know, if feeding times allow. Thank you. I'm trying to do my best to um, make Olive funny as quickly as possible so we can start <laughs> paying her on to come on the podcast. And then, <laughs> then I can justify not having to leave her at home asleep. <laughs> If you want to come to the show in Melbourne, February 1st, Charlie Pickering is joining us on stage. Kirsty Wiebeck, Sammy Shah, Andy McClelland is DJing. Also, the incredible Richard Feidler is joining us. He's the man with the most downloads of any podcaster in Australia uh, to help us celebrate us getting one million downloads, which we've already passed. I don't know what we're up to, but uh, who knows? Maybe we're up to a million three hundred thousand. Who knows? I think we might be up to um, ten million. There's a big spike. <laughs> people heard we were up to one, and they and they They're really. Right. What's uh, all the fuss about? What's all the fuss about? Yeah, everyone. Everyone's like, wait, they've won how many awards in a row? And then they just flocked. Yeah. Hey, I, do, you, do you want like the past year's awards? I should give them to you because you know I, I'm hanging. Maybe I'll hang on to this current one, and as we get new awards, I'll just hand them down to you. you you've got four. I've got none. I've got a photocopy of one on a fridge. <laughs> Actually, no, I threw that out when we moved. All right. But one one. I did ask you to. Um, I'm, send seeing, me a I'm seeing you on Saturday. I'm seeing you on Saturday. I'll bring the awards down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Just one, just one of them. I'll give you the other three. I don't, you know, you know. I don't, okay, sure. we don't, we don't need, we don't need them here. This household. I gotta, I gotta have something behind me, <laughs> even when I'm doing my. But I'm joining you. If anything, Lewis, I honestly think we earned the first three. I don't know how we got the uh, the fourth one. I think that was a pretty big mistake. I think the middle two were our strongest. The first and the last, I'm not too sure on. Anyway, we are joined by the editor of The Chaser, John Delminico. Uh, he is a part of a crew who just happened to lose um, against us at the Podcast Awards four times in a row. <laughs> but it's very exciting to talk, talk with John. We're going to talk to him all about making satire, how to tackle Trump, and also what it's like to go through having a stroke in the early 20s and then trying to find your vocation after that. And he's he's wonderful, and I very rudely um, am not present for 90% of this interview, and then I swan in at the end fresh from the beach because uh, I missed an email, and that one's on me. It's not your fault you miss your email, uh, Lewis, because it is summer. You're not meant to be looking at emails. It's totally fine. Don't worry about it. And this one is for Patreon supporters. So if you're listening on the free feed, you're probably going to hear the next uh, you know, three or four minutes of it, and then we're going to uh, cut you off rudely and bring you into the Patreon because you've got to pay for this. It's a, it's a good conversation to pay for. If you want to hear my sweet entry, that's going to cost you. Your fear is rational. Now, joining us for this week's episode of A Rational Conversation is uh, someone who you absolutely would have read if you're an Irrational Fear listener, but you may not have heard of um, because, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a faceless man, much like he's the Bill Shorten of Australian satire. Please welcome the new editor-in-chief of The Chaser. It's John Delmenico. Welcome, John. Hi. Uh, should clarify, I'm not editor-in-chief, I'm just editor just editor. Oh, not editor in chief. Yeah, I haven't thrown out Charles Firth yet. <laughs> Why not? You should throw out Charles Firth. Charles Firth is old and crusty. The whole brand needs a reboot. Uh, and you, you're you the man for the job. I think the only reason I shouldn't is because that would also put me in charge of the shot. And I don't think <laughs> right. I can be trusted okay. running an actual news outlet. You're more comfortable with fake news. I understand that. Yeah. Hey, John, it's so good to have you on the podcast. And I'm thrilled to chat with you about your plans for The Chaser. But for people who don't know um, kind of your history with The Chaser, tell us uh, how you got into the hot seat as editor of The Chaser. Yeah, so... Uh, 
nine years ago, I dropped out of uni for health stuff. And then, like, the moment that I was allowed to start doing stuff again, the chaser put out a thing being like, we're looking for new writers. Send in some pictures to this anonymous thing. And I was like, my genuine thought process was, fuck it, I'll waste someone's time. <laughs> I sent in a bunch of jokes. They liked two of them. Like, and they're very hard-hitting political stuff about Untitled Goose Game and Mars Singer. <laughs> that's pure chase affair. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's true satire. You're really going for the big targets there. <laughs> yeah. The sacred, geese, the sacred geese of comedy. When everyone thinks of um, the chaser, the first target everyone thinks of is Untitled Goose Game. <laughs> but from that, I started, that was in 2019, and then they asked me to start writing for them, like, regularly, and then that turned slowly into me becoming, like, the head writer for a few years, and then a period where I would step backwards and join the interns, and then went back to being head writer, and then now the editor. So how did you get the gig as editor? Was it just a case of just hanging around long enough, uh, like most media jobs? <laughs> I mean, kind of, yeah. Like, the previous editor, Cam Smith, he left midway through last year and then Charles thought that he could handle it all and then about two months into that, the voice vote happened and Charles realised that he had double booked himself that day. So he realised someone to step in as editor. So my first day on the job as editor was the day of the voice referendum. And <laughs> if that, that is so a perfect is start. Way, is it safe to say you're, it's because of you the no vote failed? Is that is that what you're... Is that what, is I mean, the no vote didn't that? fail, Dan, so it's not, you can't blame me for that. <laughs> no, no, that's not what I meant to say. <laughs> it's because of you the referendum failed. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, I didn't do enough jokes that day. All of my jokes <laughs> happened around the time the results came in. You, you know, people who have been following the chase over years know your work, though they might not know you personally. How do you manage to be so prolific? You, you churn out so many jokes, and I assume it's quite often just you doing doing a lot of the legwork there. Yeah, currently it, it's a lot me, but I actually I kind of don't know. Like part of it was that I learned the techniques of writing satire because, like, it was like months into me writing for The Chaser, I did the entry-level course that Charles used to run for writing, which was weird because it used the jokes that I had written, but I didn't know the techniques <laughs> behind on, them. Hang on, hang on. Charles, was, Charles was teaching people how to write jokes mm -hmm. by using your material. <laughs> yeah. A Rational Fear is brought to you by its Patreon supporters. For as little as the price of a cup of coffee, you can get this podcast ad-free. Exclusive content, discounts on live tickets, and access to the Discord chat server. Chip in at patreon.com slash irrationalfear or else.